Hi everyone, welcome to my IGCSE Edexcel physics prediction video. So this is for candidates who are both double and triple candidates because remember you all sit paper one. Now just to make one thing very clear, you will be provided with the formula list in the exam so please don't spend your time revising all those formulae, you will be provided with the equation sheets. One thing is important that you're aware of is all the various units so for example the standard unit for speed is meters per second the standard unit for mass is kilograms the standard unit for weight is newtons you need to go through every single formula and make sure that you are happy with all the units including the more unusual ones like the fact that the unit of charge is coulombs and do be prepared to convert your units they love giving you milliamps and expecting you to convert your answer to amps otherwise you won't get the full marks available in the question. Similarly, if they give you centimetres, they'll want you to convert that to metres by dividing by 100. So do not neglect your units. I don't want you hemorrhaging the odd mark here and there throughout the paper, because after all, the maths element in a physics paper is incredibly important. You will be asked to repeatedly carry out calculations, so obviously make sure you've got your calculator. You might need to measure angles if you're being asked to find the critical angle, calculate the refractive index, so make sure you've got your protractor. There's no excuse to not be fully equipped in your exam. You don't want to be wasting your time raising your hand in the exam, asking for spare apparatus, particularly if your exam centre or school doesn't have any. Now, the physics papers tend to be pretty formulaic. I highly expect there to be an electricity question. So do remember things like your rules for adding an ammeter to a circuit. It needs to be added in series, so part of the main circuit. A voltmeter, which measures voltage, needs to be added in parallel, so as a separate branch. Remember that the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit, whereas to find the voltage, you'll need to add up the individual components' voltage to find the total voltage of the circuit. The opposite is true in a parallel circuit, where the voltage is the same everywhere due to those different branches and as a result as long as your bulbs have the same resistance adding more bulbs will not change the brightness but it will mean that your cell or battery runs out more quickly now remember you can watch my all-in-one physics video or take a look at my perfect answer revision guide if you need help particularly with the electricity topic Another important topic tends to be radioactivity, so make sure you've looked at the difference between alpha and beta decay and the effect that has on both the mass number and the atomic number. Remember, gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave, so they will not expect there to be a change in either atomic number or mass number if gamma decay has occurred. Do double check that you're happy with their various penetrating and ionizing powers. I would personally have a look at EM waves, making sure you're aware of the uses and the dangers associated with each wave. Remember that radio waves have the longest wavelength and lowest frequency compared with gamma rays which have a much shorter wavelength and much higher frequency and as a result those gamma rays are far more dangerous because they're an example of ionizing radiation which can cause cell mutation and cancer. If there's a question about conduction convection radiation it's important that your answer doesn't refer to just generic oh this particular feature of a vacuum flask prevents heat loss. No, you need to describe what type of heat transfer it's going to reduce. So, for example, the silvered lining of a vacuum flask will reflect infrared radiation back at the liquid inside the flask. What is the purpose of the vacuum between the walls of the flask? That's to prevent heat transfer by conduction and convection because both of these, remember, require particles. Infrared radiation can occur in a vacuum, so will be unaffected by a vacuum. But do remember the effect that different colours or whether a substance is shiny or matte and the effect that that has on the emission, reflection and absorption of infrared radiation. Again, do check out my videos, do check out my guide if you're not entirely sure what I'm referring to. Magnetism again is another important topic, both generic magnetism to do with soft and hard magnetic materials as well as the generator and motor effect. They love asking you about Fleming's left hand rule. Do not ignore Fleming's left hand rule and don't be surprised if you see other people in the exam raising their left hand in order to work out the direction that the force is acting in. Because remember your thumb represents the force, your first finger represents the magnetic field pointing north to south, your second finger represents the direction of the current and make sure that you can 
hold those fingers in the right direction in order to work out which direction your thumb should be pointing in. Don't forget your variables. They often ask you to identify the independent variables, so what changes, the dependent variables, so what you measure, and your control variables, what you keep the same. Remember, as I've said in my other prediction videos, you are an anonymous candidate. Don't be shy with your answer and absolutely do not leave anything blank. No one knows who you are, so you want to make sure you are answering these questions to the best of your ability. Come and let me know how the exam goes by commenting below.